Welcome to Alex Cheese Aquarium, everybody. Today I want to give an update on the 480 gallon reef tank. I just did one recently because the Seamass Aquarium show had come to town and I picked up a whole bunch of corals there. And the Star Brock Saltwater Expo had just come this last weekend. It was just over an hour away from my home. I figured I'd go down there and check it out. My friends Brett and Todd from Cherry Corals were at the show, along with Blue Line Coral from Naperville, and a whole bunch of other local vendors and vendors that traveled into the show. It was a lot of fun. I really didn't spend a whole lot of time filming there. Just so many people at these shows. I just have a lot of fun looking around. And being that I take my wife with me to this show, which was her very first coral show, I wanted to spend some time with her and let her go ahead and look at all the corals. And to my surprise, she just absolutely loved this coral show. She bought more corals than I did, even though I paid for them. I still say that she picked them out. They were all beautiful pieces though, and I think she's really falling in love with keeping zoanthids. There's even a little bit of talk about setting up her own little tank for them. We'll see if that happens in the future, but for now she's got a nice little corner of the 480 gallon tank that's going to be dedicated to keeping some Heliothoa and zoanthid corals. Overall, I picked up 15 corals. I got zoanthids, Heliothoa, Gonopora, Acropora, Monopora, also got Fabia. I ended up just getting a whole bunch of different corals and I had a lot of fun at this show. It was a small little area but there were a lot of vendors packed in and for quite a while at this show it was just packed with people. A lot of good deals to be had out there and I really had to restrain myself from not buying up even more corals. And I want to talk a little bit about some of the different corals I picked up today. So we'll do a little bit of a focus in onto each one of these. To start off, the zoanthids and the paleothoa. Honestly, I don't know the names of any of these. I'm not good with a lot of these common names that are given to these different color variations. I know one is an utter chaos pally, but the rest of them were really looking nice. My wife fell in love with them and she picked up a few little frags. Of course, there were a couple of mother colonies that were brought to the show as well, which she wanted to buy. And I quickly dissuaded her, though, and said, it's a lot more fun to buy a small little piece and start to grow it out as its own colony. And that's what we're going to start doing in one section of this tank. I had the five different zoanthid pally frags kind of grouped together there by the toadstool leather and the calastrias. And they should fill in those rocks really nice. I got a couple other discs of zoanthids down on the shelf there. I haven't really mounted them yet. For now, they're just going to stay there. It's going to make a really cool little area, though, to see those all kind of grow and blend into each other. And who knows, at some point in time, I might even start fragging these out, especially if my wife decides that she wants to set up her own little reef tank with just zoanthids in it. The next corals I want to talk about really quick here are some gonoporas. I picked up a couple different varieties of a, a pink and a red gonopora. I have always have been a real fan of gonopora. When I started in the hobby, gonopora were one of those corals that really was beautiful, but nobody really understood how to take care of them. Of course, times have changed. People frag gonopora and grow it out without too much difficulty. And I'm really looking forward to seeing these small frags grow into some really nice colonies. On the big top branch of the 480 gallon reef, I put two frags up there and I really had a lot of fun mounting all these because my wife came downstairs and started to kind of pick out where she'd like some of these corals based on their lighting and flow requirements. Now I did put this one Fabia up a little higher. We're going to see how it does because it is off to the side from the really intense LED lighting and it's got some pretty decent flow there and we'll see how it does. It did get knocked off the rock. The first night, I think a urchin just happened to push it off. And I also got what I believe is called Stellata monopora. It's got a really cool green and blue polyp structure to it. Just looks really cool. I think it's going to do really nice in that spot. Kind of add a little different pop of color there. I'm looking forward to seeing it grow out. Another monopora my wife ended up picking out was this crazy tea monopora. This is a tiny little frag. It's only about a half inch long. Picked it up from Cherry Corals, beautiful little monopora, and it is a really nice piece. I'm looking to see it kind of encrust over this rock, and hopefully I'll get a chance in the future to get some frags off of this beautiful specimen. The other monopora I got was this Reverse Superman. I have another green monopora with blue polyps right next to it. I'm hoping that they kind of 
merge into each other. I don't know if they'll actually graph together. I know that could be a difficult thing to achieve, but it'd be nice to just see them kind of grow into each other, make a really nice pattern between blue and red and green. So we'll see what happens as those frags start to kind of grow over time. The final frags that I picked up from the show were Acropora frags, and I got a few different ones. I picked a couple up from Cherry Corals. I also picked some up from another vendor. These little Acropora milliporas, well, they have kind of an orangish green tone to them. I thought they looked really cool. They were at a decent price for these little frags. I picked those up. And cherry Corals, I ended up picking up a Kraken or a Kraken Millie from them. And I also picked up one I think is called a Fuego. It's a red macro that has, of course, talking about being fire for flaming. And that looks like it will be a really cool piece of grot as well. i also talk about one other coral that I picked up from my local fish store, Reef Plus. I got this beautiful green Paredes rock from them that has red Christmas tree worms coming out of it. It was a little more unique than some of the other Christmas tree rocks that are out there that tend to be more of a brown Paredes. This one happens to have a nicer green tone to it. And with those red Christmas tree worms coming out of it, it really looked a little more unique and nice. That's been in the tank now for a couple of weeks and it's also been doing really well. As far as the rest of the corals and the clams go in the 480 gallon tank, they've all been doing well. I have unfortunately lost two different corals. One not completely, the other one unfortunately it completely died. I had one blue stag that was just starting to grow a little bit and it was about the time that I was going to remove the rabbit fish that I noticed that part of the skeletal structure on it was actually chewed off. And I figured it was possible the rabbit fish could have done that. The only other culprit I saw possible of doing that was a sea urchin. But at the time, I didn't think if a sea urchin found that as a meal that it would ever leave until it was completely consumed. But I was wrong. I came down with the lights out one morning to find one of the rock boring urchins just right on top of that thing, chewing the other side of it off. I got it off and a little tip of that coral did live. Fortunately, after a few days though, it just bleached the rest of it off. It's unfortunate these things happen. I did, however, take that urchin, remove it, and put it into the 720 gallon tank. The other acro I had, it just never really did well when I put it in the tank. All the acros I've put in the tank thus far have shown some sort of growth. And this one really didn't show any the one that was next to it was already starting to shoot new branches off and encrust on the rock. This one just never really did anything. And ultimately, it started to bleach a little bit from the bottom. I picked it up and I did frag it. And I have one little tip of it that I kind of jammed in an obscure place. We'll see if it does manage to start growing there. Don't necessarily have high hopes. And it wasn't an expensive frag. And I'm not too concerned. The rest of the corals in here have been doing great though. I also mounted one other coral in the tank that I got from Reef Plus a while back and that is this yellow Nephthia. It has a yellow base to it and it's kind of a brown purple color on the outside. And this coral might not look like much now. They have a nice colony of this growing. It looks very similar to a carnation coral except it is photosynthetic. I've got it in really high flow and moderate lighting see how it does. Thus far though, it's been doing great. The final coral I almost forgot about is a leptosis. I also picked this up from Sherry Corals. It's a really bright orange leptosis and it's just a beautiful coral. They're not really the difficult coral. They're encrusting. They look really nice and I really wanted to get one. I had one in my last tank so I have one of those in here as well. That covers all the corals I picked up at the show, along with a couple that I picked up from my local fish store, Reef Plus. If you got any questions on any of these corals or questions about the 480 gallon tank, please go ahead and leave them down below. Of course, if you like today's video, go ahead and give me that thumbs up. Let me know that you like the content. As always, if you want to see more on the 1600 gallon system and its journey, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button and don't forget to hit that bell notification. Thanks again for watching everybody and I'll see you on the next video.